It's not every day that I get to talk to another female founder. I'm so excited to welcome Sylvia Kang to the conversation today to talk about her company, Mira, and her unique ovulation product. Sylvia, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Alice, for having me. I'm so excited to be here, too. I would love to start with what your path to this company look like. Tell us about how you even came up with the idea for the company. Sure, sure. So I started a company called Amira. So Amira is the fertility tracker to really help women to know better about themselves. So we track the hormone down to a number. So this will give the woman not just the fertile window or not fertile window, but it's more like uh, what's how your body is working. Do you have any hidden conditions and what you should be doing if you have a fertility goal? So I personally, I have a, a master in biomedical engineering from Columbia University. And then I got the MBA from Cornell. So, you know, incredibly well educated <laughs> woman. You, I know. You do not mind many, school. <laughs> too many <laughs> years in school. Yeah. Wow. And then, uh, and then I have so many, you know, uh, friends, like um, the, um, the classmates, just like my profile. So they're wow. women and they tend to get, you know, much higher education than before. And then followed by really a lot of, uh, great career development as well. So the result is like they tend to delay their maternal age. Sure. So they wouldn't think about to have a kid until probably mid 30 or like 35 or something. And then uh, we don't really think about this thing until the day we really start to think about, okay, maybe it's a time to have a kid. And then we, we right. realize there's so many issues there. So I have a friend and who unfortunately end up in IVF. So that not only costs her a lot of money, but also, you know, it's really painful physically as well. You know, he has to inject those hormones and doing multiple cycles mm -hmm. to extract the egg or so on. And I have few other, you know, many, really many, several of them have to go through IUI, have to go through one year of trying to conceive journey or something like that. Right. And during this process, and they, they all feel like, our body is just like a mist to us. We don't know what's going on in the cycle. And we, you know, we thought ovulation might be happening at this time, but it's not. And then we thought we should be, you know, we're already doing everything correctly, but we're just not getting pregnant. We try to mm. ask the doctor, but doctor give us something really high level or very medical term that not everyone really understands. And we try to search on internet, but the internet is very confusing. The dark, dark place <laughs> out there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, with all this, right? So we think right. it should be some tool to proactively mm -hmm. help women before things get too late. There should be something delivered to them to say, here is the information you need to pay attention so you will know when to do what. Not like, okay, this is last minute already, so I'm panicking, right. I don't know what to do. So then how do well, we I do think that? I think you bring up a really good point, though, about data, is that we live in a very data-driven society right now. You know, we can get all kinds of stats on our bodies through Apple Watch or the Fitbit or while we're wearing our heart monitor on the Peloton. There's lots of data everywhere. And historically, can you take us through what kind of ovulation kits, you know, we had accessible in the past? Because what we're learning, of course, is that not all ovulation kits are created equal and certainly not all women are. And so there's certain conditions that um, that women have to be very mindful of that not every ovulation kit is well suited for. So can you very quickly kind of take us just through like the landscape, not about the companies themselves, but about the technology that is out there to help people understand? Sure, sure. So usually there are three kinds of ovulation prediction or testing tools on the market. So the first one is the app, so fertility app. So that's probably the most easy to understand one. And that one tracks your period. So that's something you need to pay attention to, not really tracking your ovulation. So how do those two things relate it, right? So your period happening is happening at the beginning and end of your cycle and your ovulation happens between. So many people assume, or all these apps assume, your ovulation happens about 14 days before the right. starting day of the next period. Right. But we know that's not always the case. Every woman is different and every cycle is different. That's, that's right. really important because you might think you have a really regular cycle and it's just going to work for you, but it may not be because every cycle could be different. Mm -hmm. So that's the first kind of tool. It's good for you to understand your cycle if you want to track your period or 
so on. But if you have a very serious goal, you want to get conceived or you want to avoid the pregnancy very seriously, that may not be enough. And the second kind is this very popular OPK, ovulation prediction kit. So they do test for the fertility hormone, which is great because fertility hormone is the driving, is the driver, both is the cause for ovulation. So your hormone in your body increases and then your ovulation happens. But the problem is, as we said, every woman is different, every cycle is different. So your hormone level can be very different every cycle as well. So that means the OPK cannot really mm -hmm. adjust to your level. So, you, you know, you That's might have right. higher hormone, lower hormone. So sometimes you see the OPK say, oh, I don't really detect my peak with the OPK. What's happening? Or I got five days of the peak in the, with the OPK. So what's happening? So that's usually how things are happening. And, and another thing with the OPK is that, you know, usually it's not connected with an app or something digital. So you have to view by naked eyes and you have to write it down on your calendar or you, I saw many people, you know, try to stick the, uh, you know, multiple OPKs into one paper and then try to compare the line. So that's uh, a hard work. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's individuals trying to be biostatisticians, right? Exactly. <laughs> what exactly. Did, I mean, I, I did it. I did use OPKs when I, after I was recovering from cancer treatment because I did want to see if my cycles were returning. And it was just, it was very helpful to just feel, in my case, uniquely, oh my gosh, I'm ovulating. Like, you know, my period's coming back. You know, that, that was really exciting for me to get a smiley face just to know that I had any hormone activity but I was a unique case and that I wasn't actively trying to conceive then. I really just wanted to know if my body was restoring to normal after having gone through chemotherapy and, you know, three long years of medical menopause. So talk to me about all the hormones that a woman does need to know about during ovulation, because it's not, it's, it, it's not just one, but it's more than one hormone that's involved in the entire process, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Exactly. So all our hormones work together. So they're like a symphony. So every piece is a musical instrument. And they have to play together to have this beautiful pattern and our body will function normally, you know, having the ovulation every month or something like that. So the most important hormone, uh, you know, people might already know is LH hormone, so luteinizing hormone. So that hormone increases about 12 to 24 hours before the ovulation. So that will basically give you your peak for 30 days. So that means the, uh, you know, mm -hmm. egg will be released right after that hormone. So that's the most fertile time to really trying to be conceived or something like that. And the second most important hormone is estrogen. So estrogen is overlapping with your fertile window, which is great. So, we, you know, we, then with the fertile window, right? So the fertile window is about four to five days before the ovulation until the day of ovulation itself. And that's because the, the sperm can get into a woman's body if the mucus quality mm -hmm. is good, if the sperm quality is good, and then wait there until the egg to be released and fertilize the egg. There is little chance to get conceived after ovulation. Egg usually only lives like a 12 to maximum 24 hours. Most people only have 12 hours. So That's very, right. very minimal chance. So, but estrogen will increase when the you know fertile window is about to start. So a few days before the ovulation. So if you test estrogen and LH together, so those will give you your full fertile window. And in other words, they will give you your full infertile window as well. And another really important hormone is progesterone. So that one surges or start to increase after ovulation is finished. So mm -hmm. that's very important to women who are trying to avoid the pregnancy because if you don't have any egg in your body or you don't have a live egg anymore and there's a minimal, minimal chance to be conceived. So all these three hormones, of course, there are more hormones in there, but these three hormones should give you a really great spectrum about what's going on in your body. And that's what Mira is aiming to test. So Mira is currently testing the LH hormone, estrogen hormone already down to a number. So this will avoid any personal variability or variable cycle or PCOS whatsoever. So you should be still, you know, with, uh, you know, regardless what condition you have, you should still be able to see your pattern, see what's going on with your body. And in addition, Mira is launching the progesterone later this year or early next year. Okay, that's very exciting to know. Uh, that's incredibly unique to be able to measure all three. Would it be with the same device? Can you walk us through the product itself and how you use the product? Is it urine? Is it saliva? 
Sure, sure. So yes, yeah, so the good news is the all these tests are gonna be working with one analyzer. So that means that we only need one analyzer at home. We can save cost and it will be it will be really convenient. So the way we work is by testing your urine because we believe urine sample is the most stable one, you know, um, compared with others. Your body temperature could be fluctuating based on the environment, based on how you feel, and the same thing as the, the you know the electrolytes in your vagina and the you know saliva composition, all this could be affected by environmental factors. But the urine usually is the most stable and consistent one. So we, you know, basically you test your urine by dipping our test bond into urine sample and then just insert this test bond into the analyzer, which will read your hormone concentration down to a number. So this is the biggest difference. You will like just like getting the lab work from the hospital, like the blood drawing. At your house. In your house. At your house. Yeah, in your house. <laughs> and then you will say, oh, it should go to how much? Estrogen equal to how much? And those numbers will be transferred to the app automatically. And on the app, you will see your hormone curve. That's so important because, you know, we know everything is relative for a woman because everyone's different. You, your right. search is a search because that's compared to a baseline, right? It's not really an absolute number because everyone can have a huge fluctuation. So you will see your hormone pattern, you will see your curve, and you will see your stats compared with last, last cycle or a few cycles ago. And the app will interpret the number for you, will tell you what to do. Like is this time is a good, you know, you're, you're fertile, how fertile you are. You're infertile, do you have any underlying condition? Do you have anything abnormal? So, you know, we're really trying to bring the hospital quality of testing to the convenience of women's home and in a way that's understandable. Got it. Okay. Now, um, certainly it doesn't replace an actual physician's diagnosis of infertility. Um, what I do like is the, um, you know, is the approach in particular about, you know, for those who are still attempting unassisted conception, you know, some people call it natural kind of in the world of IVF, we call it unassisted, right? Um, that it that to help people really get their timing right, because as you said, in the beginning, that's the biggest question is, is my timing really right? Is my fertile window really right? And that there are certain conditions that do impact the timing, um, that p people might be getting the timing wrong. And PCOS is one of them, right? Oh, yeah. Because, you know, LH can be all over the place for somebody who is dealing with PCOS. And so have you done, um, this is something that you promote within the PCOS community. So can you speak a little bit to why it's such a great helpful tool for those who do have PCOS? Sure, sure. So the biggest reason is that people with PCOS, most of people with PCOS have a high LH level. So that means the, uh, you know, your normal LH curve should look like there's a baseline and there's a surge and then coming down. But for people with PCOS, their baseline tend to be much higher. So that's actually one of the criteria doctor uses to diagnose you have a PCOS. So with that, if you test by OPK, it will always give you positive, but obviously you're not right. always every day so that's not gonna work but with Mira you can at least do two things one thing is that you can find your real surge so that means even your baseline is high and when you have an ovulation your LH tend to go higher so basically Mira can tell you how much higher this is it's more like a Got how it. not just like a what and the second thing is like we can help you to track your PCOS condition I did have a customer who reached out to us and she said I have been testing Mira every other day for three months I have no ovulation i want to i want to return the product doesn't really work for me and we said why don't you take this data to your doctor and then maybe they say you know what does it mean maybe that there's something going on with mm. your body you didn't know and then uh, she went to a doctor and she came back saying doctor said looking at the data doctor said she has pcos so she didn't wow. really ovulate for three months so you know that's another thing it can help you sure. to really got into the clarity into your body to say, okay, is this something, you know, I'm really, am anything happening with my body? Am I getting better or do I have mm -hmm. a condition? So those things right. are not going to replace a doctor's diagnosis for sure, but it will help. It will help not only you, but sometimes the doctor as well.
Well, and I, one thing also to consider, right, is that it's it's easy information to get to your doctor and do a telemedicine consult. There is no, in that scenario that you're talking about, there's no need for a physical exam, right? They could actually just look at the data together and have a better understanding of what's going on in someone's body. And I think we're in a new normal, right? So I think exactly. at home diagnostics, telemedicine, these things are becoming more and more accessible now, which I think is is only beneficial to our user base at Fertility Answers, but to the public at large in particular. One thing that I would love to understand too, Sylvia, is the app experience. So when, you know, when you're you're advocating for people to kind of compare cycles and we know that you alternate you alternate sides, right? I mean, you, you don't ovulate from both ovaries in the same month. You it's, it's alternating. So how many months do you advocate that women track their cycles through Mira to gain a deeper understanding of their patterns? Mm -hmm. And, and what does that experience in the app really look like? Sure. So that will depend on your cycle regularity. So if you have a really regular cycle and you might, you know, the you track for the first cycle and the second cycle prediction might be really accurate already. But if you have not that much regular cycle, actually a lot of people have that. I would say most people don't have exact the same cycle length and exact the right. same ovulation date. Sure. And, and it will start to get more and more accurate over time. So we actually did a study, internal study, using our users' data. And we found that we compare mirrors mirrors uh, ovulation prediction compared to the ovulation prediction by app, which is by looking at the period only. And we Got found it. that after using mirror for four cycles and the prediction accuracy is five times higher than- Wow, the, yes, using that's the significant. <laughs> Yeah. So well, that makes sense because you're doing two cycles on each side. So if you do four cycles, you're, you know, you're getting two on the right ovary and two on the left right. ovary so that you truly have, have a, you know, cycle by cycle prediction. That makes a lot of sense. What a compelling study. I would love to see that data, but five times higher is pretty significant. Are you publishing that anywhere or have you? You should. Yeah, we haven't <laughs> published yet, but we're in the process of doing that. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's a really important consideration for people to see. So um, w where can people purchase Mira? So they can purchase Mira at the miracare.com. So that's our website and they can find more information about the product and about any edu many educational content on there as well. Well, you're incredibly educational. So you you definitely <laughs> sound like a PhD in uh, in hormones. <laughs> we we do a lot of um, we do a lot of you know conversations with physicians on hormones. So I'm really excited to um, you know to help let the world know about Mira. And uh, I think, you know, bringing the lab to the house is a really good idea right now. Thank you, Alice. Thank you so much for joining us, Sylvia. And you can check out Sylvia and Mira on the Fertility Answers app. If you have any questions, you can ask them right on the platform. And um, Sylvia and her team will be available to answer them. And we'll see you next week for Monday Motivation. Thanks, Sylvia, so much. Thank you.